So in previous videos, we already started down the rabbit hole of defining materials and diving a little more deeply into the underlying finite element analysis that's involved in performing um, the load calculations and the load analysis that OCalc Pro does. Um, so we'll continue that in this video. It's important to understand that for standard distribution poles and even reasonably complex subtransmission structures, the average user doesn't need to do this sort of thing. So this exercise is more for the um, engineer who really wants to analyze what's going on under the covers when you, in fact, use OCalc. So uh, OCalc makes a node and beam classic finite element analysis structure and performs the analysis on it for each of the 360 degree wind sweep angles and for all of the various loads and, for, and applying all the various load rules. And so we can take a look at what in fact the thing makes. If we go to tools, find an element model, view mesh, and here we actually see um, a structure. Now I'm going to declutter this a little bit. So um, I'm going to take off the node loads. I'm going to display the original structure. So there's the original structure um, displaced. And now let's take a look at what happens when I actually apply loads to the structure. So I can say, okay, um, here's the, dis here's the, dis the, the, and I can change the exag exaggeration to help me see what's going on. Here's the overall displacement of the structure. Here's the loading of all the nodes and so on and so forth. And I can also say, show me the nodal loads that were applied in performing the analysis, and these are aggregate nodes, the loads on each node. Um, if I have, I can, if I have uh, moments, uh, rotational moments, so offset bending moments applied to nodes, I can see those. I can see the uniform loads on the poles. And I can actually see this same thing numerically. So I can say, show me the actual underlying analysis this thing made. And this will show you in tabular form, all of the individual nodes, all of the individual beams, what their positions were, um, what the material used was, what the uh, uh, beams are, what the various capacities are, what the initial node locations, what the forces applied on each node are, what the final moments at, at each joint are, um, the for each beam, whether it ended up in compression, tension, or neutral. So you can see all these beams here, which are probably the legs, ended up in compression. There are certain be uh, components that ended up in tension, a couple of neutrals. Um, you can also see the uh, moments applied at the ends of each beam. You can see the near end loads, the far end loads, the near end moments, the far end moments, and so on. So you can basically dive right in, and where it knows, it tells you what thing, you know, each of those things was, what each of those beams was. But you can actually dive in and find for any given subsection, so for any given subcomponent of each of the individual sub beams that went into making up the structure, what um, in fact happened. You can actually do some, uh, something even more interesting. Um, again, this would be very seldom used uh, by the average day-to-day -day, day -day user, but it might be interesting for engineering. If I say tools, finite model, model, and I see create a node and beam model. So what it will do is disassemble this model and turn it into a lattice structure with all the same properties. And I can then go in and do things like fail a particular beam in the overall node and beam structure and see what happened. So. I'm going to go ahead and do that. It thinks about it for a second, and there it's created a node and beam model that represents the exact same analysis. Now, you notice the spans went away because they've been, they've been converted into loads, but just for the sake of argument, I could go in and I could say, you know, I'm going to fail this beam, or I'm going to change its material, so I'm going to fail that beam out, and I'm going to perform the analysis, and it goes ahead and shows me the, the process down here, and I can see the results dumped out as we did before. So if I go back to here and I say I'm going to go view the mesh, and there it is. And now I want to see the displacements and so on. You can see it's going to rack now. So um, the ability to deep dive in and see exactly what the 
um, underlying finite element engine is in fact doing. In fact, you can see how the leg was divvied up into individual segments. And, and here we can see at the bottom that, the, you know, it's provided a nodal constraint where it goes into the ground, which makes sense. And if I look at each individual leg, um, um, it tells me what material did it use. It used M24. So if I go up to M, if I go up to M24, M24, it can. I will see that the various the uh, the various moments that were assigned to each leg change as they go up section by section by section because each of the individual legs has a slightly um, uh, different top and bottom uh, radius because this is a frustrum. Um, so if you want to really dive in and see what OCalc is doing under the covers, this is the way you would do that.